Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at how to find the EMF and internal resistance of a cell. So let's get into it. Now, measuring the EMF and internal resistance of a cell is a compulsory experiment that you need to be able to do and describe for the higher physics exam. So we're going to look at the breakdown of a scientific report on how you could carry out this experiment. So the aim of this experiment, firstly, would be to determine the EMF and internal resistance of a cell. The method would be to collect a 1.5 volt battery or cell, a variable resistor, which is this device down here, an ammeter and a voltmeter. You then want to set up the equipment as shown below. So here's a circuit diagram and here's a real life picture of what that would look like. So we've got our cell with its own internal resistance enclosed by the dashed box line. We've then got a voltmeter in parallel with that and then we've got a variable resistor in series with an ammeter as well. And that's shown here. So we've got our cell here, we've got our voltmeter in parallel with some wires, We've then got our ammeter and our variable resistor. It then says to measure the EMF of the battery using the voltmeter. So initially you want to find where the EMF of the battery is without anything else connected into the battery. You just want to measure the voltage across the battery without a current flowing. And then what you want to do is set the variable resistor to its maximum setting and record the readings on the ammeter and voltmeter. So that will give you your initial set of readings and then you want to adjust the variable resistor and take a range of readings. So by adjusting the variable resistor here, you're going to be changing the resistance in the circuit, which in turn is going to change the current in the circuit. So that is going to be displayed on the ammeter here and that is going to change the voltage across the cell. And what you might end up with is something that looks a bit like this. So for the results section here, you can create a table to record values of current and voltage, i.e. the voltage here is our terminal potential difference. So let's say we went up in steps of 0.1 for the current, starting at 0.1 amps and up to 0.6 amps. And the voltage here we can see actually gets smaller. So the voltage decreases as the current increases. What you then see if you plot this on a graph is something like this. So you can then plot a graph of voltage against current to verify the EMF and calculate the internal resistance of the cell. So we can use this graph to actually find the EMF and the internal resistance. And we're gonna look at how to do that. Notice the shape of the graph, first of all. We've got the terminal potential difference or voltage on the y-axis against current on the x-axis. And once you've plotted your points and drawn a line of best fit through those points, you'll see we get this negatively sloping line on the graph. And because we're dealing with a straight line, what we can do, first of all, is we can rearrange our equation for EMF. And we can rearrange this to get V. And that's because V, you can see on the graph, is our y-axis term. So I'm going to rearrange the equation for EMF to get V on the left-hand side. So if we start with E equals V plus IR, then we get V equals E minus IR just by subtracting IR from both sides. So I get V equals E minus IR. And then with a little further manipulating, just swapping these two terms around, we get V equals minus IR plus E. And we can then compare this to the equation for a straight line y equals mx plus c, where the voltage here was the y-axis, the current, remember, was the x-axis, and that means that one of these terms will be given by our gradient from the line, and one of the terms will be given by the y-axis intercept. By comparing these two, we can actually see that c is equal to e, so the EMF is actually the y-axis intercept. So it says the y-axis intercept from our graph above gives the EMF of the cell and the gradient gives minus r. So once we've said that the current i is the x-axis, we're left with minus r here. And that means that the gradient m gives the negative of the internal resistance. So what we can do then is to find the y-axis intercept from our graph, we can extend the line backwards to the y-axis on the graph. And this gives an EMF in this example of around 1.53 volts. So let's just see that in the graph. So if I was to take a ruler here and extend this line backwards, you'll see that it cuts the y-axis at roughly 1.53 volts. So that means my EMF here is about 1.53 volts. And then to find the gradient, we can choose two points on the line of best fit that are far apart. And let's say I choose these two points, 0 0.18 and 1.45, and 0 0.52 and 1.3. So here you can see about 0 0.18 along and 1.45 up is about this point here, and 0 0.52 along is about here, and that's 1.3 up. So we've chosen two points on the line that are far apart, and then we can put them into the equation that you might know from maths in order to find the gradient of a straight line. So doing that, we can say that minus r, the negative of the internal resistance, is equal to the gradient of the line. So this is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to 1.3 minus 1.45 from here, and 0 0.52 minus 0 0.18 from the x terms there. 
And if you put that into a calculator, you get minus 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.34, which gives us minus 0 0.44. However, you'll notice that we have minus R on this side, and now we have a minus 0 0.44. So the negatives on both sides can actually cancel out, and cancelling these negative signs gives us an internal resistance in this example, small r, of 0 0.44 ohms. So you should notice that internal resistance values are always going to be pretty small compared to a normal type of resistance value. So as a conclusion for this experiment, we can say that EMF of the cell was found to be 1.5 D volts, and the internal resistance was calculated as 0 0.44 ohms. It then says to note that if resistance and current values are measured instead, then plotting a graph of R versus 1 over I can be used to find E and R as well. This time, the y-axis intercept though would give R, and the gradient would give E, the opposite of the above. And lastly, here's a little summary of how to find the EMF and internal resistance from a graph. So it says to find the EMF and internal resistance from a voltage current graph, the EMF is equal to the y-axis intercept, and the internal resistance R is equal to the negative of the gradient. So these two things are really important because you could be asked to do both of them. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this, let's say I've got a similar setup like the experiment that we just saw, and I've got a graph of terminal potential difference against current, and let's say we adjust the variable resistor to change the resistance and therefore the current in the circuit, and that also changes the value on the voltmeter. And if we were to note these readings down and then plot a graph, we're going to get points on the graph that look like this. And then we can draw a straight line through those points. And you'll notice again, we get a negatively sloping line there. And that is always going to be the case when you're carrying out an experiment to measure the terminal potential difference against current for EMF. So you're always going to see a graph that looks like this when you're dealing with EMF type questions. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.